Yo, JD here. And as you can see, we are back on F122 as always. And in today's video, we are finally back with some league racing action. And this time we arrive at round five of the British Racing Series. Last round I actually missed at France Paul Ricard because I was away. But also Mr. FRA Elite also missed that round. So I haven't actually lost any points in the championship to him there. And quite honestly, I really did need a break from this game <laughs> after last race, which was a bit of a mare. And as I said in my previous video, sometimes having a break is the perfect recipe in order to get back on track. And I felt really refreshed coming back onto this game again after over a week away and actually felt quite good coming into Austria and this time I decided to go for a little bit of a higher downfall setup that is going to be better on tyre wear as well so that's something I was really focusing on and if this is the fastest lap that I've done in the qualifying FRA Elite and FRA Matthew which is it used to be E.T. Rusty. These two guys, I think, are probably the two fastest guys on Xbox right now. And, yeah, especially Elite. I've spoken about him quite a lot in my videos. He is a pretty rare talent, I think. And for someone in the future who can definitely dominate in future series and future F1 eSports series for years to come. I truly do believe that he really is that good. And the goal of this season is to try and make it a little bit more difficult for him. So I think he's had it a bit too easy. And I think every single league race he's done, he does also does WOR. He's got pole and won the race fairly comfortably as well. So we're going to be trying, or we'll try and be one of the first people to make it a little bit more difficult for him. As we do a 4.2, almost a point one, which I was actually really happy with as my teammate MVR Arthur gave me a pretty nice slipstream on my lap. So absolutely legend for doing that. And you can see we're actually over a tenth up on this lap. So this one's actually going really well. But we actually go wide into this corner and then we've actually lost all, all of that, that advantage. Though. So come the end of the qualifying... No real surprise. FRA Elite, a 3.9. But actually, I think, although this track is very, very short, it's actually the closest I've been in qualifying throughout the season. So I was actually uh, very, very happy with that. And the rain was due to... The race was due to have rain at the end. So I decided to go on mediums here, just in case there was a uh, safety car early on. And also, in case it actually didn't rain... Uh, for the end of this race. So we've got four lights, five lights here. Best group qualifying position we've had of the season. And as the lights go out, we actually get a pretty good start. And it really is essential that I try and dispatch both of these two. But the problem is the guys up ahead of me are both in, although they're not in the same constructors team, they're in the same team as FRA. Um, so I know that they're in a party working together. So go down the inside of FRA Matthew. Fair play, he leaves the space, making a tiny bit of contact. But the angle was too tight to get some good traction off this corner. And yeah, I was just going to do my best to try and get out ahead of these guys. But even if I did, I think it was going to be very, very hard to actually break the DRS zone. Because after really five or six laps... That's where the hards actually start to come a lot closer uh, towards the medium. So I knew my advantage was really going to be on the first few laps. And if I couldn't break out the DRS zone there, then I thought there was no real chance of actually doing it. So yeah, I was just hoping that there was going to be an early safety car. And I just wanted to do something different from my rivals up ahead. So I think on the same strategy, FRO Elite is going to be pretty tough to beat so I was really hoping that I could maybe get an undercut on him ends up not raining and with this higher downforce because I was quite confident they were both running fairly low downforce that my tyres should be much better so I knew at this stage now that it was going to be hard to break out the DRS zone 
But if I could just try and wear down their tyres as much as possible, really keep them under pressure, go as long as I can on these medium tyres, and then go on the hards to get that little bit of an undercut, I felt like maybe we could do something this race as we're now going side by side of our friend Matthew. We're going try and go around the outside of him but we go on to curb get caught on the curb and we have pretty poor traction so we go use the ers once again and i knew time was running out to get this track position so we're going to do a little bit of a dummy to the inside that forces him to go deep and then we go for a really nice switch back so that was actually a very nice move up into p2 and mvr dizzy is trying to follow as well but matthew i think just stays ahead and now we're up into p2 and you can see they're squabbling up behind, but I think then Dizzy has a bit of a moment and unfortunately has spun. And now it's myself against FRA Elite. And yeah, although the mediums will still be quicker at this stage of the race, the gap between them is starting to become closer and closer. So I knew that I wasn't going to break out of this guy's DRS. He is just simply too fast. But now at least we could actually have a bit of an on-track battle as FRO Matthew looks like he's made a bit of a mistake here. So FRO Elite is going quite defensive and we were trying to get past him as soon as we could, but I had a sneaky suspicion that he would maybe try and hold me up a little bit just to bring back FRA Matthew into the mix. And I think my suspicions are going to be confirmed in the next few laps because um, he does go quite slow going through here and you can see into this next left hand he actually goes quite defensive as well so don't think he is going at full speed here I think he's just trying to bring his FRA teammate back into the equation itself but my game plan now was to really just stay with these guys as close as I could to try and save up as much ERS as possible and I believe that my tyre wear would be better so I'm going to try and go as long as I can on these mediums and then get the freshest hards possible go for that undercut use all my ERS on that undercut and then go for it as we're going for a move on FR Elite here but now coming into this top corner we have a little bit of rear locking which then pushes me out wide pushes Elite back next to me again he's going to get a DRS and with the wings he's running he was just much much faster in a straight line so we're going to try and go around the outside of him here he does leave some room on the exit but he gets a slightly better traction and we have to slot back into p2 as fro matthew actually has picked up a three second time penalty as well which will definitely help us for the remainder of this race and yeah my goal now is just to try and force these guys to pit earlier than they wanted so just try and make them use more of their tyres where they'll have to go a bit longer in the mediums and then I'll go as long as I can on these mediums here get the freshest hard as I can and then maybe towards the end of the race if we can actually stick with them on the hards and their mediums go off then we might have an opportunity so that was really uh, my game plan here so although he's trying to hold me up I wasn't really uh, too bothered by this because he's just wearing out his tyres quicker than they need to be so as far as I'm concerned this is actually playing into my favour a bit more because I knew there is absolutely no way we can break out of this DRS zone so he's still going quite defensive and yeah I'm just quite content in just sitting behind at the moment because I knew these hard tyres will probably become the fastest tyre in the next few laps and I was just wanting to just recoup the ERS stay behind him and use him to tag me along um, but secretly just really hoping for an early safety car as well that's what I was really actually hoping for uh, but the weather was did say that it was going to rain but it could be at the very end of the race so there might be a chance that we can complete this race without any wet weather interfering so yeah right here now try not to overuse the ERS too much I believe he's gonna go quite defensive again which he does so we're gonna go around the outside but every time we do that we just lock our rear tires and now we're actually gonna lose a position to FRA Matthew 
used the battery just for a bit, but then decided to turn it off. And now I thought to myself, okay, there is really no point now. I'm just going to be wasting my tyres and my ERS. I just can't really afford to be uh, doing this, but we do have a little bit of a gap to the cars behind. So as we skip on to lap nine, simply just in harvesting mode with the battery, just staying with these guys for as long as I possibly can. And as we go through into this turn one, let's see what happens here. So FRA Jonas is actually going to race and that has actually brought, is it the full safety car? Yes, it is the full safety car. So this is absolutely perfect for me. And if no rain comes for the rest of this race and we don't have another safety car, then this is absolutely perfect. This could not have come at a better time because there is absolutely no way that they can do 24 laps on these mediums. And I can quite comfortably do that amount of laps on the hards. Plus, I have the high downforce, which means my tyre wear is going to be better. So, I was absolutely praying that there wasn't going to be any wet weather at the end. And we've actually managed to jump FRA Matthew in the pits as well. Because since he's in Mercedes, he got held by some other cars. So, now we've actually come out in really a net P2. As some other people haven't decided the pits have taken a bit of a gamble. But really, we are in a net P2 on track behind FRA Elite. So... Now he's on the medium, so I know there is no way he can make it to the end of the race. So we've just got to stay with him as much as we can and try and uh, avoid him getting a pit stop on us or something like that. But yeah, it's going to be very, well, it is going to be impossible for him to get to the end. So I was just, just praying that there wasn't going to be any rain here. So he already makes a move on Jitso DB. We're going to follow him through and we should be able to slice through this field quite quickly because we are on much fresher tyres than everyone else. But I knew that Elite, with these mediums, that he was going to be superior on the pace for the first five, six laps. But if we can keep him within arm's distance and, you know, anything under really four to five seconds, then we actually have a chance in this race to maybe pick up our first win of the season because we did get P2 in the opening round of the season but it would be nice to finally <laughs> finally defeat this man because he has been undefeated so far as far as I'm concerned on this game as my teammate has not sure what he's doing there I think he's just letting us go and now we're up into P4 so we've got Carsey up ahead in P2 who hasn't pitted yet him and Elite seem to always battle quite intensely. So I was really hoping that he would actually hold him up. And Carsey and myself had a bit of an incident at Baku, which fortunately he gave me a bit of contact, which he did apologise for straight after the race. And you can see Carsey is going quite defensive here. But FRA Elite, I think the thing that's probably the most impressive about him is just the traction he gets. It is just, if he watches on board where he goes on the throttle, he goes from, when he goes for a corner, he goes from 75% like to 100% so, so quickly. It is just, it's like he just doesn't get any wheel spin whatsoever. It really is pretty remarkable. Uh, yeah, and I've said it many times before, he is just a, he, he's like racing against 110, 120 AI uh, or more. The guy just doesn't really make any mistakes either. And you have to be driving almost a perfect race. And I know a lot of people have said in the comments that if he was in esports, he wouldn't even qualify 20th. Um, I think I'd beg to differ. I really would. I think he would do pretty well. Um, with a lot more experience, of course. He still needs a lot more experience. But I think with the experience, he's going to be a driver you're going to hear about for a long, long time in the future. But we make our way past Carsey now, up into P3. E.T. Andre up ahead and we stayed behind him for a lap in fact and that has allowed Elite to get a 2.5 2.6 second gap so we're not going to use the ERS or sorry the DRS on this straight because otherwise we're just going to be really overtaken on the exit so this is is going to hold us up just a little bit we're going to use the DRS now and just try and conserve 
as much of the battery as possible. So the, the goal right now was just to try and limit that gap as much as I could and then use all the ERS on the in-lap to try and get a... Oh, sorry, well, we don't actually have to pit anymore, do we? And so I'm just completely talking rubbish here. But yeah, the goal was just to try and manage the gap as much as possible. And it looks like another safety car has come out now. And yeah, this is still not too bad um, at all. As long as it doesn't rain for the end of the race, this still puts us in a good position. And if anything, this has actually really helped me because now the gap has come down uh, once again. But you can already see that the rain has started to fall. And yeah, I was just really, really hoping um, that that wouldn't be the case. So we're just gonna stay on board this up here. You can see the raindrops are starting to come down on the screen. And you can see if the rain did come down, our pace was actually starting to match FRA Elite. And you can see Matthew behind us is actually struggling and to keep up. So the mediums are actually starting to go off at the stage because they can only really do 16 to 18 laps before they really fall off the cliff. So there's absolutely no way they could make it to the end. And you can see we're out actually starting to gain on FRA Elite just a little bit here. And that is because really of the higher downforce and with these hard tyres are starting to come into more of an effect. So we've actually maintained the gap here as a throw Matthew. I'm not sure what's happened, but I think he's decided to actually pit because he was losing a little bit of time here. But I think that's a little bit too early to be pitting. But you can see the next up, the gap has kind of maintained itself again as it looks like he is now going into the pit. So making sure he stays within the white lines. But I still felt like it was quite dry at this stage of the race so but then the DRS says it's actually been enabled um, which does say it's dry but then I think it then said it was disabled a few seconds afterwards so on the in lap it still didn't actually feel too bad so the gap was 1.2 seconds and in the wet conditions high downforce should be even more favorable so I was quietly feeling quite optimistic in these last 10 laps of the race here so getting a pretty good pit stop 2.3 seconds let's see what the gap is going to be to FR Elite so he has done a little bit of an undercut and I heard him say in his live stream that the new intermediates are almost as good as softs they actually have a lot of grip even if the track isn't wet so that is definitely one thing to note for the future you can see he's probably gained about another 1.2, 1.3 seconds as someone else has actually uh, gone off now. Uh, but now we're up into P3 of this race. FRA Kai actually pitted very, very early. DSP Olo has out of the race. And that is another safety car that has been deployed. But again, plays into my favour quite well. Because now we're going to be right behind Elite with a lot more downforce on board. But... On a one of these safety car laps here, you will see we just make a very, very clumsy error. And yeah, I just lost the car completely. And you can see that has now given me pretty much half a front wing. So most of my front wing is now damaged, which is going to cost me quite a lot of time. But you're about to see here again that Efra Hikai has now just lost the car himself. So these conditions, as soon as it started raining, the force feedback, I don't know if anyone else has this, but the force feedback went very, very high in my wheel. And I was really, really struggling to deal with that at this stage um, of the race. And yeah, unlike Baku, I'm just doing my best to just try and remain calm and just try and forget about it and just do the best I can because um, being angry about it, that's a new approach I'm trying to do right now where if something goes against me, instead of throwing my toys out the pram, just try and focus as much as possible. But I knew the task was going to be very, very difficult now. And yeah, Elite 
I think even if we didn't have that damage with the straight line speed he has and the wet weather conditions without the DRS, it's going to be very, very hard to make an overtake anyway. But you can see we've just gone straight on here because we have absolutely no front end because of this damage. Now we've got Carsey behind me who I believe was actually also running very high wing. So luckily he doesn't have the straight line speed to get past me as we go in deep once again to just trying to stay on the track as much as I can and we just about do it but we still get some good traction and that's the thing of wet weather conditions unless you're pretty much almost a second faster than someone then it's really really hard um, to make the overtake so I think even without this damage I think we could have stayed with the leap but it would have been very very hard to overtake his straight line speed would have just been a little bit too strong but if it didn't rain in the race, then he would have had to pit again, and we didn't have to pit, so I think we could have done it um, in the dry conditions. But overall, apart from that mistake, I thought we'd driven pretty well this race, and considering I hadn't been on the game for over eight days. I felt like I drove definitely a lot calmer, um, a lot more consistent as well, and the pace also seemed to be quite strong. And you can just see, as long as you get a good exit, there really is nothing that anyone can do in the wet weather conditions. And you will see going through into here, just all I was focusing on was just trying to get a good exit coming off these corners. And you can see we've got actually quite a sizable gap to Carsey up behind. But coming into the last lap, with that damage, we were just losing so much time to Elite. But we managed to maintain the gap to Carsey as long as we've got good exits and yeah coming around this last corner now it's gonna be the closest we've been to Elite itself but come across the line we're gonna come home in P2 which I was actually fairly satisfied with and considering that damage I think was actually a pretty good result so yeah, that is BRS Austria. Next race this Saturday is Monaco, where we know that almost anything can happen around there. And apparently, Afroid doesn't like street tracks because he didn't like Baku. So I was really, I'm really hoping that he doesn't like Monaco as well. But this is the current championship standings, and all things considering, I don't think it's actually too bad. Um, things can change quite quickly, but the goal is just to try and keep getting closer and closer. And then once we get to some of my better tracks as well, then yeah, hopefully we can take the opportunity. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for these new extra rotation members on the channel. Make sure you join my YouTube membership to be invited into my open lobbies, priority invites, also access to my updated setups. And also I'm currently doing 30% on one-to-one -one coaching right now for September if you become a YouTube member. So. Thank you so much, and I will catch you very, very soon. Peace.